Hello everybody, we're back over here with the Vega. My dad's been hard at work. Built the full exhaust on this thing. Got the motor all mounted, everything's pretty much done. You also built the uh, intercooler for the front, so this little ice water intercooler that feeds the intercooler underneath the blower and all that stuff. So I think we're ready to try to fire this thing for the first time. We hope it's ready to fire for the first time. You think it's ready to fire for the first time? I hope so, I think so. <laughs> Never mess with an Imtron ECU. Supposedly it's pretty easy or whatever. I got Pete's laptop here, download the Imtron software. So we're gonna give it some power here in just a minute. And hopefully I can pull the tune out of the ECU and then we can fire it and I can just watch vitals and hopefully not do much with it. Here's the exhaust that he built too. It comes down, around, wraps, tons of room because this thing used to have that big block nitrous motor in it. So what's cool is it goes to this kind of flat oval shaped uh, pipe and then stainless all the way back, muffler, little exhaust right there out the back. And we're going to see what this little throttle body is all about because that's a whole lot of air to try to fire this thing on. Since this thing runs off of an ethernet cable, I actually just found a video on YouTube. Ben Schrader from EFI University, yeah. Uh, and he goes through and kind of shows you how to go through network, set up properties, put in the IP address, all this stuff. So then um, you go in here and then you put in this IP address. And then once that's good, then the computer can talk through the ethernet cable it realizes what it's supposed to do or some magic stuff like that we go to mtron ecu it will let us go open ecu and boom there's the tune and i already saved it and it, the owner's name and everything from uh Borowski's already in there and it looks like we got a whole bunch of data over here and there's the ve table it looks like and uh everything there so lambda chart kind of cool going off kpa so went ahead and set the fuel pressure on here 296 that's right about 43 psi did a couple uh quick googlings and made sure that like somewhere around 90 degrees celsius is what we're looking for to make sure we don't overheat this thing on first startup so because everything's in celsius and you know australian numbers over here so uh, i'm sure there's a way to go in there and probably adjust that to fahrenheit and all that but one thing at a time all right, I guess let's see if this thing will fire up. Close. No, it'll go into flood clear if you do that. It, it's, it's shutting the blade and then it's trying to work it, so it's doing its thing. It probably just needs to get enough fuel in it. Got a weird pop out the exhaust. It's probably just the blower doing its thing when it stops and then new to the blower car. So here's the thing, we're also way up in elevation. This thing ran somewhere back east, so I'm not sure if it's gonna love firing up here at elevation either. So it's hard hard to say. They should, yeah. They should try to hold idle, so yeah. I'll try to pull a little fuel out of it. The thing is, being up at high elevation, it's just, just too fat for it to want to fire and idle, I think. I don't know. It's hard to say, really, with what it's got going on here. Who knows? Fire in the hole. Take two. Take It kicks a big old fireball out of this thing. So I'm just coming in here. They had it clear down in like 48, so I'm just going to keep raising the VE um, in the startup area until hopefully it gets better. Three. <laughs> oh, yeah. I could probably pull, because it tries to go way up in RPM. So some of it I'm just on the like the crank area, but I probably gotta pull all the way. I gotta probably pull a lot. So what I did here guys is I just pulled right here at crank. When it goes to start, this moves this uh, cell right here and it went clear up to, you know, 1,000, 1,500. So we're clear up in here. So I'll probably go ahead and pull some fuel out all the way across here. Um, I've saved their tune up, so then I'll just start modifying mine. And I can always revert back if I need to. like that so it's it almost wants to idle there and then it pops i don't know i just don't know enough about systems or the whipple or the 
you know, the throttle body on this thing, and I'm, I don't want to go and start changing all their stuff. If this thing ran perfect and made 1,200 horsepower on their dyno, um, a couple with the uh, keystrokes, and it should run really, really good here. There's no reason. Shit, I'm surprised it just doesn't even start. I think we're at a we're at a pause for a minute. So fast forward about a week, and we're back over at the Vega. I actually just got done downloading any desk onto the laptop. So the Borowski guys can log in and look and see what we got going on, see what's what's going on here, because I'm not sure and I don't want to start messing with their tune up too much. Everything ran great. They had it all tuned on the dyno. So hopefully it's just a few little things where they'll figure out what's going on. So guys, we got Tim on the phone. He's helping us go through some throttle body setups on the uh, Mtron here. And then we also did a calibration of the throttle pedal because it does have a drive-by-wire throttle pedal. So trying to get it figured out so we can get this thing fired up. Ready? Yep. So just got off the computer and phone with the Borowski guy, um, Tim, he, huge help, helped us get this thing. They actually had to position the throttle blade open a little bit more to get it to start. Uh, this thing has a pretty aggressive like ramp on the startup and then it comes down and idles probably because the big blower, it's kind of a little surge, but got it dialed in pretty good. We're gonna work on it some more once we get the car down under like under load weight and everything and we can drive it. So otherwise, what do you think, dad? I think it sounds pretty nasty. It's uh, super nasty and this thing, is uh he had me blip the throttle a couple times and it you barely touch it and it it revs like crazy so this thing is going to be quite the monster but it feels like the converter might be pretty loose so i don't know it's gonna it's gonna be an interesting interesting unit but everything's pretty much done otherwise other than the like mounting the dash and finishing his little wiring harness there yeah. but that's always kind of waiting on just make sure if he had to get into some way to change some wires or something but Everything's checking out pretty good, so. Looking pretty decent, yeah, so. Yeah, finish buttoning things up. Everything's checking out. At least starts, it runs. <laughs> yeah, no major leaks, no major issues, so. No, that's a big plus. Gonna go ahead and uh, I'll fire it up for you guys, kind of show you where we ended. I was gonna film more, but we were using my phone. Uh, and then I got a couple clips I gotta get from my dad, but while we were doing the whole telecommunications thing. So here we go. <laughs> Probably 95% done now, huh? Yep, it's real close. So I'll be back with you guys when we probably get it down. I'll go do a first drive and everything and dial in anything else that we need. And then this thing will go to Pete, the owner. Uh, and then hopefully, whenever he goes to race it, we'll be able to do some videos on that too. So if you guys want to see more on this thing, pretty wild little combo, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you guys in the next video.